so that's john lock and uh, before we start studying him and his political <laughs> before we start uh, you can attach whatever adjectives you want to with him but uh, there are certain things that we need to remember first thing first you see the era it's 1632 1704 okay and it was during this time that this uh, england was also undergoing some rapid socio economic changes okay so there was something very unusual happening in england at that time and that unusual something is uh, known as uh, let me just put it here so what was happening here there is something called the glorious revolution okay now this happened in england this happened in england around uh, 1683 84 so you know that england was uh, kind of uh, ruled by the monarch now what happens through this after this glorious revolution the legislative body called parliament comes so when a parliament comes after a glorious revolution what would it do enhance the powers of monarch or limit the power of monarch please tell me limit very good so this parliament actually curbed the powers okay you know there is a very interesting quote if i tell you mm. there will always be five kings you read this there will always be five kings four in cards and one in england king is bound to sign his death warrant can you see these two quotes which i wrote just now so actually no king here is a kind of a, it it equates a king you can say monarch okay it can be queen as well so yeah the crown actually so these two quotations you know these two quotations are actually trying to convey us that post glorious revolution power of monarch is what high or low notional okay power of monarch is how high santosh why you wrote high are kaise explain it to me how high how are they uh, signifying high power to monarch these two quotations so what is this always saying this always is not saying that uh, he has some real power he is just a notional king in card okay it depends on which game you are playing i am not very well versed in games of card it is just saying he is a notional king as non existent as a card uh, as a king in the card and king is bound to sign his death warrant which means if the parliament of england actually legislates it that the king should die king has to sign it what is king a nominal head yes he is the very correct yes sam this quote means that king is ceremonial head okay he is a ceremonial head and in indian in india if you see the indian counterpart we have the president but you cannot say this for the president can you president has something called pocket veto and why would the parliament dare to pass death warrant of parliament of president you cannot do that right the constitution does not allow it in fact only there is this impeachment to which the president can be removed which has not happened ever in this country and shall not happen ever in this country okay so it is actually this glorious revolution that is why you know england is way ahead of its time of all the colonial powers i can rub this right see see try to understand please yeah of all these colonial powers england developed first as a nation state when no other country no other country knew about what a nation state is post this glorious revolution this concept of nation state became very very palpable very very uh, kind of it can be observed how a nation state behaves like so that gave england uh, relevant actually it, it gave england a, an extra edge over others okay no country was capable of doing what england could do that is why english ruled for maximum time on maximum area of world correct thanks to the glorious revolution all other countries were still experimenting with feudalism revolution you see america it will take 1776 france another some more years okay and england has become a nation state which means uniform law uniform tax policy uniform administration uniform syllabi so these things matter for nation states that is why england was the most powerful country of course there are other reasons apart from these political factors like it was connected through a perennial system of rivers so it had the influence on the trade so on and so forth okay now the point that i'm trying to tell you here is uh, just see this so what we need to know here that's john lock so 
when he was born when john lock was born the revolution had already occurred and uh, england was acting like kind of uh, the numero uno for the entire world okay the most famous colony, uh, famous imperial power in fact ahead of france england and france were the only two uh, first and second at that time now what happens uh, this guy comes and you see here father of liberalism okay he has inspired the likes of volatire and rousseau two great thinkers have been inspired by him hobbes is great exponent of absolute democracy locke will talk about the liberal democracy we have seen absolute state yesterday right what thomas hobbes talks about and locke you know locke uh, there is a story which i would like to tell you a very short story like uh, uh, his his family and uh, his his father you know he was actually uh, working for the government now he was inspired by the levelers who were levelers they were a radical wing within the army within the english army now these people wanted that uh, there must be an extensive level of democracy and individual liberty now the king will never want these things okay king was not in favor of granting such absolute status but this guide had some other idea so he was influenced by these people the levelers who were the levelers just try to remember it it's not that you have to actually cram it up to remember that's good because we need to understand the influences that have shaped the opinion of this very thinker okay so they talked about democracy and individual liberty and he witnessed glorious revolution as i told you in england and uh, after that the transfer of power happened king had very uh, kind of uh, limited powers and parliament had a real powers from here comes his concept of limited state okay he'll talk about limited state so what is this limited state that we often uh, hear about that state will not govern state will not regulate each and everything related to life okay that is what is the uh, concept of limited state comes here that state shall have a very very limited role okay so you can see here that parliament is actually greater than the king but that parliament is actually a form of limited state right now you see uh, american constitution is closest to the philosophy of john locke because america is considered to be george bush junior the one that you have seen you have not seen the senior i guess senior was there in the gulf war 1 1991 92 junior was there in uh, nailing osama bin laden and uh, saddam hussein before obama i'll explain this limited state surely uh, first let us try to understand what is the epitome of liberalism that i'm talking about uh, and uh, there were wars uh, 9/11 had happened all of you know what was 9/11 the world trade center was struck down by the terrorists the islamic terrorists especially taliban all those muhammad attan all were al qaeda people so america declared a war on terror and bombarded afghanistan and then iraq also so there were american soldiers who were also on the casualty side so one such soldier died in fact many american soldiers died many nato forces were killed because the terrain was so rough so he his coffin came and the president george bush was there and the mother said mother of that foreign soldier the dead soldier said that you have killed my son you are responsible for his death and george bush said okay i'm sorry now imagine this happening in any other country certainly not possible in fact the current president of us he is abused blue and black it's just that he gives back he gives as good as he gets so you can call america as a very liberal uh, society and what does liberalism believe in it believe in the liberty of man and limitation on the power of the state so what is liberty it is nothing but freedom okay law support absolute right to property which means mm, he is supporting the limited state and on one side and supporting feudal lords on the other now where is he supporting the feudal lord how, how, how do you got this uh, that he is supporting the feudal lords he supports absolute right to property what does, does that mean what so no 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 that's not uh, how this uh, absolute right of property would manifest uh, anyone who has the buying capacity can be feudal lords it can be farmers anyone workers and because there will be liberalism so feudal lords are who do they actually represent they represent the state but state power is already curbed by liberalism 
correct state is just a minimal state this is what what kind of state it is minimalist state limited role like maintain suitable conditions for business so when modi ji said this is what he was talking about maximum governance minimum government okay now you understood he is not giving any favor to the capitalist or the feudal lords yes one will have absolute amount of land because he is a liberal he would go for individual right so if you have the buying capacity why do you not uh, want to buy uh, why why there should be a restriction on your property you having more land see see uh, i can rub this okay note it down he also said you know now this is textbook you know f a hake the austrian school economist the laissez faire economist the liberal economist okay so this is he is the father now this will manifest in the form of state in the form of governance in the form of economy and you will have free market supporters like f a hake friedman okay in india we have our very own uh, jagdish bhagwati ji you know uh, okay you right then i'll tell you but i should not tell you these things now no. written all of you so what was the earlier question someone else asked one question there was one more question uh, i forgot please please let me answer that question ha huh, what is limited state you asked okay see what is limited state which interferes the least okay which actually interferes the least yes uh, which interferes the least limited state would mean that the state will interfere the least which means state or the government will not tell you uh, kind of uh, what uh, like if you uh, you can put it this way that uh, there will be less regulations okay less rules smooth functioning of like you want to apply for a license any kind of you want to build your house you need clearance so these things will be carried on in a very smooth way you don't have to toil every day to the government office okay justice will be delivered these are the liberal limited state okay understood less of laws less of uh, in fact uh, there is another term that you know yes of course yes yes i do not contradict that it's not like uh, if you are pro business okay this does not mean that there will be the less the laws and regulations the better it is for business understood in fact mr ravi shankar prasad he is union minister law minister i guess right in modi 1 he headed a committee that that was actually all irrelevant laws so as to make india pro business pro investment why would a businessman like to do business when he has to make uh, you know many uh, chakkas many he has to visit the government office all the time in order to open a small business you have to visit 10 offices government offices then you need this stamp then you need this fill up this form then you need to submit it then it will be verified this is not what businesses look for it's not pro business it is anti business too much law is always anti business are you understanding it so the government of india formed a committee headed by none other than the union law minister whose purpose is to scrap laws the old irrelevant laws which only cause delay which only result into denials you know you are asked to get clearance from here and there so how will you do business did you understand this is it all right sam okay so this is how you sum up your limited state right there will be smooth functioning less regulations there has to be a pro business environment okay government will make laws government will implement laws but government will not make a weave a web of laws in which the citizen will be lost so that's how it is done now another thing uh, how does this actually manifest the liberalism now i said state limited government right business or you can say economy free market so this is administration less administration and smooth citizen centric and friendly okay so because he supports absolute right to property which means any one capable of purchasing property will not be denied capable of means must have the purchasing power that is money what makes you capable of buying something money makes you capable of buying something so anyone who is having 
money and if he wants to have more of property there shall be no denial okay and that's why he's called this scholar of bourgeois class bourgeois you remember haves and what he says about the social contract government is a trust and people are trustees so again he he, he goes for social contract so there has been uh, uh, the questions have been asked hobbes lock both are exponent of social contract here it is batao yesterday we talked about it absolute state individual summit says except for one which one quick click quick quick except right to life this was thomas hobbes now john lock says state is a trust people are trustees and why hobbes says that absolute state is a necessity if you remember why hobbes says that absolute state is a necessity quickly tell me to safeguard people okay right on it there okay to prevent anarchy see now we'll understand this liberal argue that unless government is constitutionally limited with again we we are coming to one more concept we have constitutionalism and its function kept minimum civil right and liberties of the individual cannot be ensured so if there is all pervading and all encompassing government in hindi it would be called sarvavyapi sarva shaktiman types something like god then liberty will be compromised so government must be limited by the constitution that is the term constitutionalism it will kind of uh, put limit on the government as there certain uh, boundaries that government cannot cross constitutional boundaries not to be crossed now one more thing quickly write this written all of you wrote it okay okay write it write it quickly now can we proceed now why is liberalism advocating democratic system and locke himself was not very much uh, fond of democracy because democracy was not uh, kind of very uh, amicable during those times okay democracy was still to be experimented it was not clearly established at that time so the thing is what he talks about he talks about uh, liberalism okay now where else with liberalism flourish that's a big question mark other than democracy so emphasis on individual right and liberties led liberal theorists to include right to vote liberalism will emphasize on individual rights right to vote becomes a part and when this is equal like universal adult franchise like in india we have then it certainly leads to democracy okay when you have one vote irrespective of your any credential other than that you are a major above 18 and above and you can vote only then we can say that individual rights have been enshrined vote is the surest guarantee of limited government as it provides a check upon the potential abuse of power so we see that for liberalism to survive democracy is a prerequisite or is it essential right are you understanding it now isn't this actually anti obesian entire thing that we have discussed here yes or no it depends you understood how liberalism and democracy are interrelated yes both being individualists still have different thoughts yes anirudh where is the alternative you tell me if not liberalism then where conservatism no radicalism no communism no socialism no which other form of government monarchy no only democracy they are what is if hobbes don't support democracy then how he wants monarchy to be formed and be people friendly see for hobbes what matters is social contract it can be an elected government you vote someone it becomes an elected it can be a monarch with consent of people either of the two can rule and they will establish absolute state people through consent will surrender all the rights and this surrendering is irreversible remember this we have discussed yes or no who asked this did you understand this was from uh, santosh santosh asked if both hobbes no no not santosh archita ls if hobbes don't support democracy how he wants government to be formed and be people friendly yes no government does not have to be people friendly for hobbes okay government does not have to be people friendly for hobbes what is hobbes his social contract aims to establish by people friendly when will you try to be people friendly achita batao when achita i am asking you when will you try to be people friendly when they are like they they help the people to be independent sir mm, not exactly see 
C C C. When you have high regards for the people, when you think people are important, okay, people are important. When you value people, but what is he saying? What is Thomas Hobbes saying? Is he having a very high regard for people? What is his view? Men of reason or men of passion? Remember, he said something. Desire, yes. For people, desire or passion is important. There is reason also, but but desire is important. Now, Locke does not think so. Locke says that people are men of reason. We need to value people. Did you understand? Achita, it's okay. So, no other. No other form of government other than against some question. He here refers to who contradicts by disliking democracy. Locke. No, it's not like he dis dislikes. He, he had not explored the many facets of democracy. Later on, we, uh, the exponents of liberalism, the likes of Montesquieu, the likes of Volatire, all the liberal economists, they will say that democracy is very much needed. He, as father of liberalism, says that yes, right to vote is important. So where else you are given right to vote? In democracies? Yes, yes, yes. No, it's constitutionalism is as important as democracy. Constitutionalism prevents government to act arbitrarily, frame laws within the limits provide mechanism for text this is what it will do so in the absence of constitutionalism in the absence of constitutionalism government might develop an autocratic tendency got it yes both will go hand in hand both will go hand in hand constitution and democracy goes hand in hand all points okay here why liberalism is most favored by democracies and why democrats are by default they have to be pro-liberal all right very uh, obvious stuff we are seeing because we are trying to understand why they are saying what they are saying who promotes uh, negative liberty here of course Locke has talked about negative liberty see when the state is having minimal role state is having minimal role which means state is not coming here in your house to say whose photo you can have on your wall, it is the state telling you, I am rubbing it, okay? Because I have to write certain other things. Bolo, okay? You know, in USSR, you need to have Lenin and Stalin's pictures in your house. Now tell me, liberty anyone? No liberty. You could not have criticized. No, not now, not now. Now, USSR, for the benefit of everyone, disintegrated in 1991, okay? So I am talking about. Uh, 1917 the revolution happened to 1991 of course joseph stalin came uh, after lenin then came nikita Khrushchev, and then there was this guy uh, mikhail gorbachev we'll study them somewhere else now try to understand uh, you could not have criticized the soviet rule in your house with your wife or wife uh, a woman with her husband or a man with his wife why because the next morning you will be arrested because your partner happens to be working for the state and he or she could have complained that this guy or this girl is scribbing they are complaining about the state they need to be liquidated this is what soviet russia soviet union was okay yeah this is this is what orwellian you will always remember george orwell 1984 and <laughs> animal farm this is what yes it's a police state actually it's a police state so limited government will never be a police state and when there is limited government government will not ask whose pictures in should be in your house okay government will not decide which hair style that can that can you have now that they have this provision in north korea which cloth you should wear right which food you should eat which music or movies you can listen to so of course this is a zone of negative liberty so by default limited state will have more of negative liberty zones than these orwellian states or totalitarian don't use george orwell don't say orwellian state it's good that you have read him but not to be used in our optional there are political reasons which we shall not go into why george orwell is not here okay understood all of you oh, let me check the questions that you have asked. okay yes it's actually a thought police they are building perceptions this is nothing but a visual showcasing of power you had huge statues leningrad can you imagine battle of stalingrad you have to study but imagine having a chalk named Narendra Modi chalk or Lal Krishna Advani chalk or a Reddy chalk when these people are very much floating around. They are alive, right? When people die, we name roads after him. But imagine building statues of people who are alive, naming roads after those who are... Okay, this is unparalleled. This is what? This is a thought police act. 
the, this is the only name that we can recall aditya right no one other than mayavati has built her, her own statues in india i guess did periya do that uh, i doubt he did that he, he did uh, much idiotic things but not this so the thing is that uh, it it becomes it becomes very very uh, eminent thought police is there now why would uh, kind of uh, someone who talks so much about liberty will uh, or uh, liberalism will promote these things who talks about limited state of course it will not are you understanding so lock has uh, never uh, kind of uh, favored an absolute form of government now let us move social contract theory of marx he follows social contract and he says a reason and passion both are present in man in a balanced form see until now people were not sure about the proportion he is saying it's in balanced form and for his own self interest man needs to respect the life of others his state of nature is social unlike hobbes whose state of nature is anti social we have seen it yesterday the reason in man guides him not to harm others and what was happening in state of nature hobbes would say chaos locke is saying peace still inconvenience were there so for a lock even in state of nature there was element of inconvenience so to do away with this inconvenience man enters into social contract so for him government is a matter of convenience okay government is a matter of convenience for him now again this is a very contrary position to thomas hobbes locke says that you cannot survive without state he says that state will make your life convenient right he is not saying that there will be uh, inconvenience thomas hobbes he is saying you won't be able to live a good life you won't be able to exist probably state you know for lock state is like insurance company right like an insurance company insurance agency they will provide you with insurance whatever you want to do what is insurance company you all know how an insurance company functions protect you from unforeseen troubles and for that what you need to do you need to pay the premium so this premium is actually locks uh, insurance company is the government there can be unforeseen troubles in your life yes actually yeah. the term which the finance minister has used do you know this there was a lot of criticism that she is saying it's an act of god it's actually a legal term and we pay premium to the insurance agencies for for john lock you need to enter into social contract whether where some of your rights will be compromised for a hobbes all rights except right right to life is compromised but for a john lock some of the rights you need to be within the ambit of the law that's it i am rubbing it okay karun rab please let me know there have been questions in your exam that's why i am doing this they have asked so many times comparison of lock with hobbes mostly on social contract that's why we are doing it because both are exponents of social contract theory can i rub it all of you have noted now try to understand again uh, when there are uh, less uh, uh, powers on state is limited in locks social contract okay unlike hobbes power of state is very much high there is just one restriction that you cannot arbitrarily take the right of life okay but here what happens he is giving a very limited power to the state okay now liberal theory i'll tell you something it will even manifest not only in the form of uh, polity the form of economy so in the form of polity it will means less laws uh, regulations uh, restrictions civil services like civil services are very important to run the government but when they have so much of power like you you have heard this uh, the scheme modi ji launched it mission kya naam tha karm yogi what was the name yaar for what karm yogi yes so it makes civil services actually a service i don't know uh, how many civil servants you have met but here mostly in delhi most of them are doing anything uh, they think that they are not service to hai nahi <laughs> do they look like service provider this believe that the indian bureaucrats are like kings do you know this or not where is the service so the thing is that uh, we are witnessing eras of reform like giants have to change and government is making a very concentrated effort that they they actually do this so again uh, liberalism polity trade side told you economic i'll tell you this now that they would be facilitators when you go to a civil servant when you meet an is officer a secretary level is officer that you want to open some plant some industry 
which will do so many things under make it india scheme then he should be you know very convincing he must be assuring you that yes yes you are doing a good thing he should not tell you why this will not be done in fact he should be telling you the solutions that okay if this is the blueprint that you have prepared you must proceed like this obtain this certificate from this department and do this so that you will get it very early and then come to me i'll definitely sign it if i'm not there just leave me a note i'll send you an email we are living into digital era right so this is how civilian a civil servant should sound when there is a provision of liberal limited government unlike what we have witnessed babudam Okay, Karl Marx has used a very tough term for that, presumptuous officiousness. So leave it here. I'll not use it here; it will confuse you. Now, when it comes to economy, less of government. Okay, like uh, there are certain central problems of economy: what to produce, how to produce, by which technique it is to be, what to produce, which good you will produce. So you decide which good you will produce. Why the government will tell you? You see the risk factor. You see the margin that you are getting. You see how it is to be done. Okay, are you understanding, people? so you decide how the good will be produced and which technology will be which means whether you will employ more of machines or more of labor that should be the call of the entrepreneur not the government how much to produce how much you will keep in your stock how much you will send in the wholesale market how much you will keep in the retail that should be your call so when these things are done by individual out of uh, his experience of the interaction in the market then this is a free market economy and when the government is telling you no 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 not more than 100 units do not increase the price beyond this this is a government control economy it's not a liberal economy you know uh, this i wanted to uh, okay i'll tell you uh, there is this uh, no do not try to start reading things okay uh, just passing reference is all we need there is this brilliant book how many of you have read that everyone who has uh, two of you have read it my god the thing is see both these people are uh, welfare economists what will they do they will always talk about more government more government state 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 what is this book let us suggest uncertain glory which means india's glory this book came in 2012 13 jean bigchola well i mean left of the center he keeps roaming around in delhi slum he teaches economics in rachi university also in some other colleges and he is very critical of the government the current government of course sen has always been against the state but more so against the modi government both of them so uh, in fact he he even manipulated some of the data when he once wrote an article that was very much evident so they will talk about more government okay government should come with more welfare policy okay they will like something like mandrega very much subsidies very much okay they they are very form of using social justice phenomena okay give dolls so if their views are considered the budget would always be into a fiscal deficit now contrary to this there are two other people and they also wrote a wonderful book now these two bhagwati and amartya sen are long time rivals arvind panagriya you all know he was there in the pmesc so they are in favor of free market they will call for cutting these things and what they will say what john lock is saying liberal economy must be liberal and they say you increase the share of pie increase wealth before you try to distribute it they will say distribute the wealth they will say no first increase the wealth there has to be wealth before it has to be it can be distributed in order to take people out of poverty okay you need wealth and wealth does not come in thin air there has to be business right there has to be a product or a service that can that will have a monetary value that will be sold in the market people will purchase it poverty will go so what will say say enable business and they will say business are profiteering you understand how lock liberalism manifest in business jagdish bhagwati and arvind panagriya this wonderful book of course this is also a wonderful book but both of them are extreme so if you even attempt to read them read them together which of course you cannot do so leave them okay how will you read these two thick books now when you have to prepare for your exam so better leave them we will have passing references again i told you the list already so no need to go into the details for now okay are we done with this anyone having any question here feel free to ask if you have do you understand the contrary views of two two to three four, four scholars here what would liberalism say what professor bhagwati and panagriya are saying 
not what professor sen and john drees are saying here the third point this one his state of nature this you are asking vishnu okay okay i'm coming to his state of nature first you remember what was state of nature it is social who can tell me what was the state of nature so if you don't remember then how will we continue with this so you were absent but then lectures are recorded right please please listen to it you you will know it okay okay yeah, you will get it not to worry to ram sir him to the needful so anyone who can tell me what is uh, state of nature quickly no no i want the exact one what did hobbes say might is right right c c c okay okay you are all giving me the keywords shrews locke is before adam smith Adam Smith was born in 1723. He died in, I guess, 1790 or 91. So, boy, he's the father. Have you heard that? Father of liberalism. Adam Smith is after him. Okay. Now, one more thing. Locke died before Adam Smith was born. So, what happens in state of nature that uh, man is very uh, kind of uh, gross, rudimentary, brutal. because man is dominated by passion or desire compare it with the early man right he used to live in cave perfect nature and might is right was there whosoever will is strong will prevail over the weak so when you think this that man is rudimentary man is gross man is brutal man is idiot man is dominated by desire strong will prevail over the weak then you were not having a very high opinion about people this is thomas hobbes it is social because man is higher both are two minutes before we saw that man wants man will not harm the other person because he wants his security to remain intact if you harm today someone else will harm you tomorrow so man has reason not to engage into all this so lock is having high opinion contrary to what this guy was thinking he is not having he is having high opinion so that for uh, lock state of nature is social but for hobbes it's anti social understood who asked it uh, vishnu you were asking right did you understand now you see the social contract this i have already told you state is like insurance now the question here is in state of nature there was no common authority to make and execute laws so everyone used to make and execute the laws tabhi to might is right hoga individual can't be judge in his own case you know this riya will not be asked testify that she didn't consume drugs or killed ssr because she is an accused let us leave killed ssr because we have not yet seen the cbi charge sheet the ncb has arrested her today narcotics so she will not be asked to uh, accused you cannot be a judge in your own case okay there will be an argument she will be questioned she will be custodially custodically interrogated but she cannot just that this is a basic jurisprudence okay rule of now the thing is that individual cannot be judge then who will be the judge when there is no common authority so if every person is making and executing laws there will be a chaos total perfect recipe for disaster right so peace during state of nature is dependent on the reason of man this is what locke is telling us that man is having a reason as long as he exercises his reasoning capabilities peace will remain but he also has passion what if passion takes over reason okay man is having both but there might be a situation that he will be overpowered by his passionate element rather than his reasonable elements so once passion takes over reason peace will not be there so better to create an authority okay so this will be a common authority which was missing in state of nature and that common authority is nothing but the state understood all of you please tell okay hey, where is sumana where did she run away so we can okay so this is what john lock is telling us any questions till here
yes yes of course john locke's state is always a minimal state but even this minimal state is the common authority where the law has been framed only state will regulate and enforce no one else will but those areas into which state will regulate and enforce would be minimum okay the jurisdiction of the state jurisdiction means the ability to regulate and enforce laws or to take decisions regarding others that is called jurisdiction so states jurisdictions would be minimum but then only state will do that individuals will not do that are individuals framing a law in any country isn't the senate in usa the parliament framing the laws or is it like uh, private individuals are making laws it's not like that right state has the primary task of state is to make and enforce law so that well being of people is guaranteed are you saying it the primary task of state is to maintain make law so that the well being the basic in existence of people is guaranteed now locke would say john locke favors some minimalist state so he would say that those areas into which state can adjudicate or area the basic jurisdiction of the state has to be very limited contracted it will not expand government will not get into every aspect aspect only the bare minimum where you have to be there